Revenge films. My wife, Wilma, and I are living together, and we've been married for three years. I'm one of the members of the board at the company, and it might sound like I'm bragging, but I earn quite a good amount despite my young age. I can support our living with just my job alone. So ever since we got married, my wife works at home as a housewife, doing the household chores and keeping our home warm. Wilma's good at cooking, so I get to eat delicious food every day, and she diligently cleans the house and washes the clothes. She even irons my clothes, so I get to wear clean and crisp clothing to work every day. I didn't have any complaints regarding my wife. That's why I thought that my marriage was smooth sailing. However, one day, something happened that overturned my thinking. I don't usually stare and take a hard look at my wife's lingerie. But all of a sudden, one day, my wife started wearing lingerie with a completely different design than she used to. But it's not the type of design that I prefer. It's the flashy kind of design. And what made me think suspicious even more is that it was hidden away at the back of the drawer. She doesn't wear it often. Sometimes, when I get home from a long work trip, I see it hung outside on the balcony. When I saw that, I thought it was suspicious. I guess this is what you call a male intuition. But despite thinking that it's suspicious, I didn't have any other pieces of evidence. And I checked her phone too, but I didn't find anything strange there. However, I can't wholly prove that she's completely innocent either so a hazy feeling remained in my heart. Then one day, while we were having dinner, Wilma told me that she would go on a trip with our neighbor, Mrs. Anderson. This was not the first time that Wilma and Mrs. Anderson were going on a trip together. I couldn't really prove that Wilma was lying and that she'll be going on a trip with another man. However, I thought it was a little odd, so I decided to do a little investigation on my own while my wife went to the supermarket to buy groceries. Mrs. Anderson waters her plants in the garden every day, so I nonchalantly greeted her. Hello, Mrs. Anderson. Oh, hello, Henry. What a nice weather, isn't it? It's perfect for gardening. Aren't you with Wilma today? Fine weather indeed. My wife went out to buy some groceries. Mrs. Anderson and I talked a little about trivial matters, but she didn't mention about her upcoming trip with Wilma. Normally, she would talk about stuff like that whenever we chat a little like this but she never mentioned anything about it to me, so I thought that she didn't plan to tell me about it. Wilma always goes with Mrs. Anderson, so I was almost certain that Wilma was hiding something from me. I then asked my wife where she would be going for the trip. Then I happily sent her off on her trip. Right after Wilma hopped into the taxi to the airport, I immediately took action because it was a time-sensitive matter. I called the detective agency that I already contracted and I told them about where my wife was headed, and I asked them to follow her. The detective agency's agent was very fast with her job. Without a moment of delay, she found my wife, and she started sending me pictures of her and another man. Just as I thought. My wife went on a trip with her lover. I then saw the picture that she sent me of my wife and the man kissing. I was happy to receive some definitive evidence, but at the same time, I felt despair and sadness. After receiving a picture of my wife and the man walking into a hotel, I immediately called my wife. She then picked up the phone immediately. You seem to be having a lot of fun on your trip. Uh, of course. I'm having a lot of fun with Mrs. Anderson and the girls. Mm -hmm. Is that so? I'm glad to hear that. Actually, I'm in California too. I was assigned to a sudden business trip in California, so I hopped onto the flight after yours. What? <laughs> no need to be so surprised. More importantly, where are you right now? Mrs. Anderson always helps us a lot, so since we're all in California, how about the three of us meet up for dinner? When I said that, I could tell that my wife was upset. She's very easy to read when she's caught. Wilma then told me that she was on a trip with her girlfriends, so I couldn't disturb their bonding time. That's when I dropped another bomb on her. I showed her a live video of Mrs. Anderson and her granddaughter skating happily at an ice rink. That day, when I had a chat with Mrs. Anderson, she didn't have anything planned with Wilma. But she told me that her granddaughter would be visiting from Texas, 
so I gave her the ice skating ticket that I was planning to use with my wife. While my wife was having an affair in California, Mrs. Anderson, who was supposed to be with her, was ice skating with her granddaughter. I then told her everything that I knew, and I also revealed to her that I had a picture of her and another man as pieces of evidence of the love affair. Wilma went mad and started trying to make excuses and explain herself. No, it's not what you think! Don't misunderstand the situation! How does she not expect me to believe her when she went into a hotel with another man? I was appalled by all her lies, and I'd had enough of them. So I told her, I don't mind, just enjoy your trip there. However, you won't have a house to go home to after that. I heard her say, wait a minute, but I didn't want to hear her voice anymore, so I hung up the phone immediately. After that, my wife ran out of the hotel with all speed, but I of course didn't plan on forgiving her at all. Meanwhile, I was packing up all her things, and I arranged for the boxes to be sent to Wilma's parents' house. I then hired a professional to get the house key changed, and I waited alone at home. Wilma must have hopped onto the earliest flight available after that, because by night, she already arrived home. She then tried to open the door, but it wouldn't open. I replaced the key and locked it, of course. Wilma probably noticed that I changed the locks, because she banged on the door and shouted that I open it. That's why I kindly opened the door for her, and when she walked into the house, she was shocked when she noticed that all her things were gone. Oh, where is all my stuff? Your things aren't here anymore. I already sent them all to your parents' house. We're going to get divorced soon anyway. So it would all be meaningless to have your stuff here, right? By the way, I already told your father about what happened, so don't worry about it. Don't worry about it? What? A divorce? No, I form with that. I'm sorry, Henry. That was just a passing fancy. Sorry, but I can't forgive you for this one. The only reason I let you into this house is so that you can sign this paper. I then handed the paper to her after uttering those words. Wilma even bowed her head to the ground, hoping that I would forgive her. But instead of forgiving her, I said, You chose to have an affair, so you of course are aware of the consequences that come with it, right? I don't plan on forgiving you for this, and I will request alimony from you and that man. Please. Get out of here right after you sign this. Or do you prefer that I call your father and make him drag you home? While we were talking about her father, Wilma received a call from him. Why don't you answer the phone? Wilma went pale and shook her head. She then signed the official divorce registration paper. Honestly, my father-in-law is a very scary person. And Wilma even got slapped in the face once because that was how he disciplined his children. There's no problem if one lives a serious and honest life, but he despised people who did not follow the principles of humanity. I'm sure he was extremely upset when his daughter cheated on me. After that, I asked Wilma everything she knew about the man. She told me his name and his workplace. She told me that the man was her senior at work when she was still working before we got married. Wilma then continued to tell me that they happened to bump into each other while they were waiting for the bus to arrive. They then exchanged phone numbers, and they ended up having an affair after that. Wilma cried and said that she admitted to the affair, but that she still loves me. How dare she say that. I then told Wilma to pack up all her things, and she left within the few days I gave her. Meanwhile, I stayed at a business hotel, and I requested alimony from the man while I was there. I also sent certification content to her boss, and the man wasn't fired from his job, but I heard that he was moved to a post in the countryside. The man was single and didn't have a wife or children, but he was supposed to be promoted to a higher rank after completing the important task that he was assigned to. I think that it was the best time to bring him down. I then demanded tens of thousands of dollars from each of them. My mother-in-law was worried about what other people might think of them, so she paid the alimony in one lump sum. She also apologized on behalf of her daughter's actions. As for the man, the lawyer that I hired was a very competent person, so she was able to convince the man to pay for the alimony in one lump sum from his savings. She saved me a crucial amount of time dealing with him. The man eventually lost his job after that, 
and he had little left of his savings. So he ended up getting his whole life ruined. Meanwhile, Wilma got kicked out of the house and had no choice but to go home to her parents because all her stuff was there. However, her father scolded her and cursed her. So she called me crying and begged me to get back together. Wilma said that she wanted to come home to my embrace. However, I don't have feelings for her anymore. So I told her, you don't live here anymore. You live with your parents now, right? Your mother graciously paid the alimony for you in one lump sum. You should show filial piety to your parents from now on. I told her that, and then I hung up the phone. It's probably emotionally distressing for Wilma to go home to her strict and scary father, but since her parents paid for her wrongdoings, she probably won't be able to run away from them unless she pays off the debt she owes them. Condolences to her. Never have I ever thought that I would be betrayed by my wife after three years of marriage. But on a positive note, we didn't have a child together, so at least there's that. How was today's video? If you enjoyed it, please subscribe, like, and leave a comment. Stay tuned for more.